Looks like you need a vacation. Enter the five-hour energy Where Will the Tide Take You sweepstakes. You could win a $10,000 dream beach vacation. Imagine jet setting off to a tropical paradise. Having fun in the sun or diving at a gorgeous reef. It's up to you. No purchase necessary. Go to 5hetide.com for official rules and to enter. That's 5hetide.com. Enter today. Ends June 30th, 2024. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Corient. Corient provides wealth management services centered around you. They focus on exceeding your expectations and simplifying your life. Corient has been helping high achievers just like you enjoy their lives more fully, preserve their wealth, and provide for the people, causes, and communities they care about. As one of the largest integrated fee-only registered investment advisors in the U.S., Corient has deeply experienced teams in 23 strategic locations. Corient has extensive knowledge spanning the full spectrum of planning, investing, lending, and money management disciplines. Leverage Corient's exclusive network of experts to craft custom solutions designed to help you reach your financial goals, no matter how complex they may be. Real wealth requires real solutions. For more information, connect with a wealth advisor today at Corient.com. That's C-O-R-I-E-N-T.com. Corient.com. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage. All the way to the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. You've worked hard for what you have, your money, your assets, your 401k and home. Isn't it all worth protecting? Nearly one in four consumers have been a victim of identity theft. LifeLock Ultimate Plus helps protect your finances with up to $3 million in reimbursement. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats you might miss. And if your identity is stolen, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. Let LifeLock help protect what you've worked so hard for. Save 25% off your first year on LifeLock Ultimate Plus at LifeLock.com slash aware. Terms apply. Marcus is a connoisseur of anything that's free, so he was happy to read the disclaimer on TurboTax Free Edition. Roughly 37% of taxpayers qualify. Form 1040 and limited credits only. See how at TurboTax.com. <laughs> that's me! File your taxes 100% free with TurboTax Free Edition and get your max refund guaranteed. See if you qualify to file for free at TurboTax.com. See max refund guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Hello there. Welcome to One on One. My name is Bridget Otu. Uh, today on One on One, we are continuing a conversation that was started by the Fourth Estate. Now, Fourth Estate, let me just give you a quick background to that uh, fantastic institution. It's uh, uh, fourthestate.com. You can follow them, go online. They have done what we call, you know, journalism. They are not just reporting, announced. They go behind, they investigate. And that is real journalism because it calls for a lot of resources. Resources that most media houses do not have. And that's why I personally appreciate what they do there. I mean, persons like uh, Suleiman Abraima of uh, Media Foundation for West Africa, multiple award-winning journalist Manasse Azuri, all part of the team, that incredible team at Forte State, plus some young journalists. And this is what they have done. They, had, they have a compelling report on the rot at the scholarship secretariat, where persons who are affluent, who are politically connected, people who are not needy, are the ones robbing and ripping the state of its resources, very scarce resources, meant for brilliant but needy children or needy students. So 
We're going to look at that and also a man who has been an advocate. First of all, listening to the stories of Ghanaians who are abroad, home, who have been victims of the scandalous nature of the scholarship secretaries. When we come back from the short break, I will introduce my guest and he will share with us first-hand information on what his experiences have been, what students have been telling, and what the way forward to, with, with, the, with the expose that we're seeing done by the Fourth Estate, where a person like the Freddie Blay, former chair of the New Patriotic Party, who had millions of dollars to buy vehicles for the New Patriotic Party, did not have 5,900 pounds to send his own daughter to school abroad. We'll be back to look at details of this. Right, and it's one on one here on Metro Television. My guest is Suleimana Isifu, and he is a research fellow on Rottenberg Institute, University of Hoffenheim, <laughs> Germany. I hope I did not murder that. Hoffenheim, right? <laughs> Hi, Suleimana, welcome to the show. I have to get that. Did I get the Hoffenheim correct? Oh, I murdered it. Oh, my goodness. Someone said he's in the, you are in the region, you are in the region of uh, it being correct. So it's Hohenheim, Hohenheim. Hohenheim. The H, the H, the H-E-N is quite silent. Silent. So Hohenheim. Okay, yeah, Hohenheim. Hohenheim University. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Um, I know you've spoken extensively on this, but for my viewers who are watching you for the very first time, I want you to give me first-hand information when did it dawn on you that the rot at the, sec uh, the scholarship secretaries was this huge and that story needed to be told? Yes, thank you very much, Bridget. And um, as you said, we all have to commend uh, Fourth Estate for this uh, fantastic piece of work. Right. Yes, it may not have contained all the pieces of evidence, but at least it has provided us a basis and a spark to discuss the scholarship secretaries, which in my opinion, should be one of the most critical institutions if Ghana really want to um, become, uh, Ghana wants to go beyond eight, as uh, right. we have been told uh, by the president. It's a very important institution that we need to protect. So yes, it dawned on me to speak about the scholarship secretariat many years ago when myself, I decided to um, take my academic uh, journey elsewhere, like I mean, study abroad. Right. Well, I did not actually apply to this. I didn't apply to the scholarship secretariat. Okay. For me, by the grace of God, I got a foreign uh, sponsored scholarship. So I had really nothing to do with the scholarship secretariat. And even around that time, I had many friends who had been telling me it would be difficult for, for people to get, uh, for me or anybody else to get uh, sponsorship from the scholarship secretariat. Because so you're, not, that, you're not needy. Yes, because, well, I was they, needy, they actually, thought. I come from a, <laughs> no, not because I was not needy, but they, they felt that um, once you don't have anybody high up there who is willing oh, to hold your hand right. and go to the secretary and say, hey, this is my boy, please assist him. They said it would be difficult to get it. So this was, I mean, these were all rumors that I would right. say amongst friends who right. were peers, who were all now, let's say, coming out of university, were all thinking of, what to do. And so because of that discouragement, I really did not um, take any interest in applying to the scholarship secretariat. Right. And God being so good, I was uh, selected amongst one one of three uh, to to do masters. And I was uh, sponsored by my university that okay. gave me uh, the sponsorship. Right. Okay. So I did not have personal um, connections or let me say personal okay. interaction with the scholarship secretariat. Okay. Now, when I came abroad, then within, I think, one year or two, I began to hear very nasty stories. And in mm. fact, before I left Ghana, let me put this out again. Before I left Ghana, there was a colleague of mine who had also been admitted in one of the top universities. Okay. And he told me that his father had gone to the scholarship secretariat. And at the time, he was asked to pay 40,000 Ghana cities. These are his words. Before um, he could for, get the, the scholarship. scholarship. Yes, for the scholarship. He was right. asked to pay 40,000 Ghana cities at the time. Right. So his father, um, this guy, actually, I got to know him after our admission. I didn't know him personally in Ghana. Right, right. So when we were admitted, he had actually taken the lead. So then he called me um, through a friend who knew me. So the friend had told him that I'll be coming abroad and I'll be doing the same course as him. 
So he decided to reach out to me and ask me to take some items from his father. It was when I met his father that his father decided to tell me the story of his son who got admission and he was struggling to find money to pay. And when he approached the scholarship, scholarship secretariat, they asked him to pay 40,000 Ghana cities at okay. the time in order to be given the scholarship. So this was the first um, account that I heard from someone like who, who claimed at the time that he was a personal, um, let me say, witness to the rot at the scholarship secretariat. Mm. But when I came uh, abroad, I, I heard a lot of stories from other students. And then at a point, the stories that I was hearing were really serious. And to be honest, nobody is perfect. But I tell you, I'm one person whose in integrity you can't take for granted. Yeah. So it is very difficult for anybody to come in front of me and come with shady deals. Yeah. But I've heard, I had heard shady deals from Ghanaian students abroad, some of whom had told me that they were... Uh, how do I call it? They they were asked by intermediaries or scholarship secretariat okay. to so receive someone. So who are these then... in intermediaries? First, first, I think I want to go back a bit. My first question uh -huh. is: So did the the father pay the forty thousand, or he did not pay, and he got a foreign no. scholarship? And also, who are no, these intermediaries? Pay. Yeah. So this father, he did not pay for him. There was no intermediary. He said he approached the scholar, uh, scholarship himself. secretariat right. by himself. Right. Yes, because why he did not pay, he told me that uh, in Germany, for example, when you are, you are admitted, you are requested to pay what they call, uh, open what they call a blocked account. Right. Account where you uh, ring fence some money that will be used to take care of you when you come to the country. Mm. Because right. they want to be sure you are not going to be stranded when you come in. So he said he did not pay because it didn't make sense to give the 40000 away when he could use just look for additional money, add and open the blocked account. Oh. So he did not pay. That was the reason why he did not pay. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. So now when I talk about the intermediaries mm -hmm. and here, I don't want to mention names, but I, I, I know you, you're very that, sensitive about that. I know because yes. it's important that those students are also not victimized and gone after with lawsuits and stuff. But I just want to know, like, who are the crop of people? Who are they? Are they, uh, do they work at the, sec the scholarship secretariat? Are they politicians? Who are they? That's just it. Just to have an idea in my head, yeah. Yes, some of them are workers of scholarship secretariat, and there are students as well. Okay. So, for example, imagine if I obtained a scholarship through dubious means. I become a friend of the scholarship, scholarship secretariat. Yeah. They can use me for dubious deals abroad. Because, because you played ball the first time. Anyway. Yes. So, okay. there are students. I know two people. Um, one is a student, one is a worker of the scholarship secretariat. Okay. I'm sure they are going to listen to this and they know what I'm talking about. Mm. And I personally confronted one of them, and this was about three years ago, and told him that what you're doing, you should be very ashamed of yourself. Right. Yes, so I confronted him, and he denied. He swore heaven and earth that all those rumors are not true. But you see, Bridget, okay. the point is that when I look at the sheer volume of uh, witnesses that were coming. Yeah. And the fact that the people who told me the stories were not related. So it's not as if Bridget knows, let's say, Stephanie and the two of them are telling me the so, same story. No. Right. So I meet Bridget somewhere different from a different location. He she tells me a story. Yeah. Then I go to meet Stephanie, another different location. Stephanie doesn't know Bridget, but he tells she tells me another story mm. that corroborates exactly what um, Bridget, Bridget had said me. earlier. Right. Yes, so any reasonable person will not brush aside the story. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, when I came abroad, I would say my academic, I flourished in my academic pursuit. So mm -hmm. um, I before I even completed, I was recruited as a research uh, fellow on an European Union project. Okay. And this project is part of my doctoral research as well. Okay. So even before I defended my master thesis, I had been recruited. Right. And so... This project has given me, gave me an opportunity to travel extensively around Europe because this was an EU project based in the EU where we're investigating ecosystem services. I don't want to bore you with the science. Sure, that's I get it. It's an EU project. Sure. So it means that I have the opportunity to travel across Europe. Sure. Aside these travels where I go to partner countries who are involved in this project, as an academic, I also travel a lot for academic um uh, for to academic forum for conferences. Even sure. today, when you contacted me, I told you I was presenting at a conference. Yes, today. you did. And when yes. you go to such conferences, you meet students from Ghana because some of them are also in other universities. They come. Some may not be students. Some some of them may also be 
uh, research associates and different uh, portfolios in the academic uh, ladder. So they also come. And when you meet, everybody will tell his story. Oh, how did you come? How you see that that thing? So everybody will share the experience. experiences. Yeah. And everybody. So you go to France, and then you meet a Ghanaian student who will tell you a harrowing story about the scholarship secretariat. Mm. And some of them go as far as saying they will never step foot in Ghana mm. because if this is how Ghana has treated them, they don't see the reason why they should come back and serve their country because when they needed their country most, their country was demanding money from them, right? Mm. So some of them go to the extent of swearing not to step a foot in Ghana because of the pain that they claim the scholarship secretariat had passed them through, yeah. right? And you go to, let's say, uh, Belgium. You meet a student that doesn't know the one in France, and he's also telling you the same story. Yeah. I went to Sweden, met some students. They told me the same story. Either the stories are that either I've been asked to pay money or I've been asked uh, to pay money for the scholarship yeah. or I've been asked to receive monies and return part of it and all of that. So the stories are myriad and they are cocktail in nature. Yeah. Now, the, the point is that some of the stories are so serious that I met some of the recipients, so-called recipients, and I, right. I will explain some of these uh, the contours so that, I mean, I know that Ghanaian, um, uh, poli uh, I don't want to say policy, but Ghanaian service people like to use sophistry to, uh, how do I call it, to wish away very important matters. So I will try yeah. to go into the contours. So okay, that you see sure, sure. That, um, whatever explanations they are giving are not tenable. Sure. So I met students who told me that they were asked to receive monies and then give back some of it. Part of it, yes. yes. That way yeah. I spoke about earlier, right? So I became so furious because I could not understand or fathom why a resource that is meant to fill... So first of all, let me go... Let me give you some layers of sure. uh, uses of scholarships. Sure. Number one, scholarships are supposed to fill critical human resource gaps. Number two... Scholarships are supposed to serve, serve as a safety net for the poor. And number three, some countries use scholarships as political tools to prop up their image internationally. Mm. So when you hear that, let's say, India is saying we are giving scholarships to Ghanaians, it's not as if they love Ghanaians. They say, you're more fair, man. No, it's not the reason. <laughs> the reason is that India, mm -hmm. yes, India wants to prop, us, prop up its image in yeah. the eyes of Ghana. So yes. that when they have an interest at the UN, Ghana will say, ah, these guys have been good to us. They will yeah. support you. Yeah. So Turkey... Uh, Morocco and all these countries, not as if they have abundance of resources, but they have an agenda why they decide to yeah. go external and give scholarships abroad. Huh. Ghana, we have not reached that level. So that third importance or third use of a scholarship, we will not even discuss it. Mm. What we need now are the, are the first two. Yes. Abraham Maslow's theory of these are physiological needs. So we need to fill our critical human resource gaps. So, for example, I don't understand why to date some cases in law. Ghana would have to hire the services of an international expert. Mm. Does it mean Ghanaians don't have the brain to learn that and assist Ghana when we need it? Why should Ghana, for example, in the medical field, why must we source some of the treatments expertise from outside? Does it mean we don't have Ghanaians that are brainy enough to learn these technical mm. areas in medicine? We have, but the resources are not available for individuals to do it. So these are the well, because they needs. are not politically connected. It's because it's not like they are not interested. So if you want to invest in somebody who is maybe interested in hearts, for instance, yes. like Professor Boating, Frimpon Boating, yes. um, you don't see them getting scholarship because I am seeing somebody get scholarship to go and study administration, something that can be done at I'll the University of Ghana. How come they see all those courses? Brilliant. Right. All those courses is deliberate. They know why they are giving scholarship for those. Okay. I'll explain to you why they are giving and remind me as I move on with my mm. narrative. Okay, sure. We have a reason why they are giving those uh, scholarships. So these two things, which is to fill critical human resource gap and also to provide safety net for the poor, these two things are non-negotiable in the life of a country like Ghana that is struggling to, 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 to uh, make ends meet, to pay our debt and to do the things that we need to survive as a country. Yeah. So when I heard these stories, I became really alarmed. So I started to talk to a few people. And everybody would tell me what they, 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 uh, they've experienced with the scholarship secretariat have and all been. that. And Bridget, the point is that I have received many, many, many accounts on first-hand uh, interactions with the with students. Right. And to also tell the people in Ghana, I've heard some of them saying some things about me. I don't care. The mm -hmm. point is that, look, some of us, we are not cheap. I have currently, I'll be going to the U.S. next week, and I'm a visiting scholar at Purdue University. 
when I go there, I would, I'm going to live, stay with the university for five months for research. I will meet Ghanaians there. They will tell me their story. So if God has put me in a position where I have the opportunity to interact with Ghanaians and to hear their plight, why should I, why should I not uh, turn myself into a conveyor belt and amplify their concerns with yeah. the ultimate interest of reforming our country to the benefit of all of us? So mm. those of the people, those people who are trying behind the scenes, it will not work. I will continue to tell the story as I know it. Yeah. So the point is that um, the, the students who received the scholarships and then some of them were asked to pay back. I know some of them. I know someone who refused this deal from the scholarship secretariat agent. He said he cannot take 10,000 euros and give you 8,000 euros and he will give 2,000 euros. Right. When his name is what is on the record in Ghana as having received the scholarship. Yeah. And there's a story, Bridget, of a student, I have mentioned this uh, already on Joy, yeah. whose bank account was closed down by an European bank in one of the European countries. His bank account was closed down. Why? Because, for example, I always use German as example. I don't know what is happening in, uh, in the UK, for okay, example. Right. I don't know how much. I've lived in the UK for some time, but I was still using my bank um, in Germany. So I did not I did not have the opportunity to work directly or to sure. interface directly with UK banks. But in Germany, for sure, you are not allowed to withdraw more than 2,000, 2,500 euros at a go. Okay. So this guy, in one of the countries, he went to withdraw more than the limits. And this triggered an internal alert and the bank wrote to him the following week and closed down his bank account. Read it. This is a letter I saw with my own eye when the bank closed down his account. The bank did not give the reason except to say that you have withdrawn more than required and this is beyond the limit that is permitted by law, which means that when a bank triggers such an alert system, they are suspecting your money laundering. Money laundering, yeah, absolutely. Crimes. Right. Yes, so they, they, they closed down the bank account. So when I say that, I know some of the rot at the scholarship, uh, scholarship secretariat firsthand. First I am being factual and I'm speaking the truth. I'm not lying and I'm not conjuring uh, stories. These are no, stories I mean, I, I, I don't think that anybody me. even, I don't think even anybody doubts you because I have listened to some of the defenses or reasons from uh, Sir Richard Jemphy, the international relations officer of the scholarship secretariat. And I've also listened to the, uh, what's it called, the registrar. And uh, when you mentioned, I think this morning, a colleague had asked him about um, Freddie Blay's daughter, and he goes, his response was, is she a Ghanaian? Mm -hmm. And that's not what, yes. nobody is doubting their, their, their country of origin, yes, or their Ghanaianness. Yeah. They are simply mm -hmm. saying that these people, they may be brilliant, mm -hmm. which we don't even know, we don't even know what they're great at, to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. These people may be Ghanaian, but they are not needy, because then they are denying yes. Others who are really needy of the opportunity. And then the other guy, Richard, goes on to say, oh, the number is insignificant because it's just 0.5%. But if 0.5%, you're spending over 50,000 pounds on one person and say you're spending, mm -hmm. say, 10,000 Ghana cities on another in Ghana. I mean, the disparity there cannot be. Mm -hmm. So the reasons that they are given, I agree, that are not tenable. But why are they so stubborn in their reasons, however frail they sound? So... I am accusing them, and I've accused them when they know what I'm talking about, that they are using the visa for, uh, sorry, they are using the scholar, scholarship secretary visa, for visa racketeering. Racketeering, yeah. Yes. This is why they are giving scholarships to courses like MSc Administration, Administration. MSc Political Marketing, yeah. uh, uh, MSc Accounting, MSc Law. I don't want to denigrate any course of Because study. these are not critical to national developments. Because yes. you want to rare courses, courses that, that the, person, the person's knowledge will be needed after the university by the country because the country must benefit from that scholarship. Correct? Yes. That, hmm. is, that is the first function of the scholarship. That is right. the field critical human resource gap, which I mentioned. Yes. But, but because, yes, but because they are using it for visa racketeering and they know that these courses are not critical, but then they... For example, as I mentioned, uh, and I have not mentioned this here now, but I'll mention it. For example, okay. they will give somebody, somebody will go and pay, let's say, for, uh, and I've seen figures of, of uh, that people told me, some said they paid 50,000, mm. others say 30,000, they demanded. I mean, some are even going in pounds and, and all of that. Mm. And the reason why they will take the money and give you that course is that, so they take the money and then put you on record that you are a recipient of a scholarship, and then they give you what they call the offer letter. Oh, yeah. This offer letter, many use it as a guarantee 
to get their visas. Their visas. Right? Oh. And when they get their visas, they, are, they, 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 they run away. <laughs> They run away. No, they, they not even run away. They they, they use it as all, all all form of schemes to get maybe, for example, their spouse or a fake oh, spouse to okay. school. Okay. And the scholarship secretariat would put the name of this person on the list as having received a certain amount as scholarship. Right. Right. But you as an accomplice, you know that you did the not. Money that you are claiming you've received, you are not going to receive it. Right. They are only helping you with the letter so that you can get your visa and run away from it. So that. scratch my back, I scratch your back. Yes. In a rotten well, they system. Just take it, uh, yes. They just want to run away from Ghana. So in one, if you want to stretch the argument, you would say that the uh, scholar, scholarship secretariat is even brain draining Ghana. Mm. So they give these courses. And the reason why, additional reasons why they give these courses is that, as you mentioned, yeah, they don't need they know we don't need these courses as critical as, uh, let's say, a heart surgeon or any of the other mm -hmm. uh, areas, engineering, all of that. So when these students finish, look, the UK government, for example, they will insist that you came here on scholarship from your country, your home country. So go back to your country and serve your country. But if you want to remain here, you must come to us with evidence from your government that shows that your government has relieved you of your responsibility to the state before we allow you to stay here. So you have to come with what we call a letter of consent. And this letter of consent is what would guarantee you a graduate visa or a job-seeking visa. So okay. it, yeah. what happens is that some of the students pay £3,000, and I've seen some of them told me they paid £2,000, some £3,000, right. £3, right. depending on how beautiful or how short or how tall you are. The right. money is varied. Some people pay 2000 right. Some people pay 3000 And they pay these monies and get what they call the letters of consent and use that letter to get visas to stay, continue to stay mm. in those countries. And sadly, somebody with masters will be serving in a care home and wow. giving care to the aged. aged. Wow. Somebody with masters will be serving as a janitor in a company. Somebody will be, with masters will be serving as a security guard mm. somewhere. Because he doesn't want to come to Ghana. Right. And the scholarship secretariat is facilitating this. And I use the scenario that imagine, Bridget, do you think that if they had sponsored critical human resource, like let's say heart surgeon, yes, to go abroad, they will and the be... person says, give me a letter of consent to say abroad, do you think they will give the letter no, to the person? No, he will have to come to Ghana and pay your due. They will never give you the letter. Yes. And they will not get money from you. Yeah. Because you, what value <laughs> would they get from you? You must come back. But if they give it to somebody in marketing, and the person goes and the person doesn't come back. The nation doesn't lose anything. And in return, he will get 3,000 pounds into his pocket. So mm -hmm. why would he give you the so-called medical person or some of us who are into uh, microbial ecology? Why would they give me the scholarship to, to go and study microbial ecology when they know that um, in the long run, it will not make sense for them to give me a letter of consent to stay abroad. And so um, they will rather give it to okay. a, a course that if the person doesn't come, the nation won't, won't lose anything and they'll get money from the person. This okay. is what is happening at the scho scho uh, okay. scholarship uh, secretariat. So, so, right? so, 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 I, I want you to just hold on a bit for me. I want us to run through some of the names that we have seen. And now the fourth mm -hmm. estates who brought this out say they will publish about 900 beneficiaries mm -hmm. from 2019 and 2020. But I want us to spend a moment just, just go through some of the persons who have benefited and why they don't deserve to have received the scholarships that were awarded to them. So my producers, if you can put, can we have um, mm -hmm. uh, Freddie Blaze's daughter, for instance, on screen so that you, you look at the amount. She, I think she got about 5,900 pounds to, that mm -hmm. is her, Lucy Blaze, that's her picture on the screen. And this is Ketsi, the fourth estate. We're so grateful for this. Now, she needed an amount of 5,933 pounds to the University mm -hmm. of uh, London and Kaplan University College in 2020. And um, this is a daughter of Freddie Blade, the daughter of Freddie Blade, former chair of the NPP. And I cannot stress this enough. This man had, had vowed and promised to buy and even bought buses for the NPP for every constituency, millions of dollars. And his wife is also Gina Blade, who is an ambassador. And we all know. And they claim that they don't have 5,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And the argument is that she's a Ghanaian. Of course she's a Ghanaian, but it's for brilliant but needy. So they, if we're saying that Freddie Blay and Gina Blay are needing parents, then what are we telling parents who have brilliant children in the villages 
uh, uh, who can't even afford to take their children to the universities, if these people claim that they are needy. Uh, can we have uh, another uh, person on screen and then I'll run through uh, them. The, okay, so this one, um, the name itself gives itself away. I mean, Michael Oforiata Jr., he received 16,000 pounds in 2020 University of Birmingham and the course he pursued was Foundation Pathways, Social Science, Business and Law. This is so common in this country, Ghana. Now, his connection directly, of course, former Finance Minister Ken Oforiata and the president himself. And he's also a personal assistant to Mr. Gabby Ochre Dakum. And these three gentlemen could not have helped this man get the 16,000 pound scholarship, if indeed he were brilliant and needed to go to that school. So these are the people who are fighting with the brilliant but needy students. Can we have the next yes. person on screen? So I'm um, Celestina Marco Atta, and she is an NPP youth activist. And there's a pattern. They are all related to the New Patriotic Party. So if you're probably NDC, I don't know if Fourth Estate is going to publish that, but it looks like if you're NDC, you're not going to get a scholarship. If you're a Ghanaian who does not have any political affiliation, you're not going to get a scholarship. And I think that's what we want to prevent, that future governments will not repeat what this government has done. Now, give to your worry, for instance, I'd like to talk about her. She has deactivated her Twitter account because of the kind of vitriol she was receiving because she could possibly not have been a needy person because she's the deputy director, national service secretariat. She's also an MPP person, and we know her so well at the sports, I know the sports fraternity, they, they haven't forgiven her, right? And she took 18,450 pounds to study MSc in policy and politics in the UK University of Birmingham in 2020. And now she has been attacked so much that she has left social media. She deactivated her Twitter account because people kept picking on her. Next. Okay. Now, Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer, again, NPP Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer, and he got about £5,995 to also study in the UK. So that is the pattern that we're seeing. We'll have more as we're talking. I'm sure we'll have... Um, uh, again, another MPP member, Dennis Addo, Dr. Dennis Addo, he went to Harvard University, got $50,000, $50,031, MA in public administration. This course is so, like, common. And you listen to Suleiman, uh, Suleiman listen to the ECF, listen to this. The course is so common, public admin. It's one of the most common courses, I think, right? Yeah. Um, yes. And look at a diplomat, right? A diplomat. Florence Akuno, a diplomat who earns in foreign currency, could not have found £4,000 to study, £4,000 to study, and had to get that from scholarship secretary. So how do the needy and brilliant get? Because it looks like now it's rather the rich and connected, politically connected, who are benefiting from the uh, scholarship secretary. I want to thank my team for what they have just put on the screen. But So um, back to you, Suleiman. I mean, you're seeing this, right? And they yeah. have not been able to give a single... I have not heard them give a single excuse mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. reasonable, that is tenable. Does it worry mm -hmm. you then that despite the rots and the level mm -hmm. of rots that we're seeing and the nonchalant response that we're seeing from them that it would ever change, it would change. Do, do you get worried by the responses that you're getting? Yes, uh, Bridget, I get very worried. Um, also because when I travel extensively also, I see the plight of many Ghanaians. I've seen Ghanaians who were logged out of university facilities in, in abroad here because the scholarship secretariat could not redeem the pledge or could not right. redeem the scholarships they gave them. Right. So it means that the money has been clogged somewhere. So even though on paper they are telling you that they've given 2,000 or 3,000 scholarships to Ghanaians abroad, in actual sense, they will pay only about 2% of it to the people who are really, 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 really connected to them and then leave the remaining ones. As I speak now, Hungary, there are students who are agitating, Ghanaian students who are agitating in Hungary yes. because some of them are on the verge of sleeping on the streets. Right. Some of them are on the verge of sleeping on the streets. When I went to Scotland, I met students who were crowding in one room because their landlords had chased them away because scholarship wow. secretariat could not afford, uh, sorry, I will not say could not afford, did not want to redeem their pledges. And some universities- right. And these are people who don't have like big people behind them, correct? So this could be somebody who probably also found his way through, you know. Oh, so, the dubious means, yeah. and so, so they are unable be, to talk. Yeah, I this get could it. Be that. And this could be somebody who 
uh, went into a deal and got it and went abroad. But then the scholars secretariat on record knows that this person, so there's no need to waste money on him, right? Yeah. So there are many students who are struggling. And I met, I remember a sad story of a student that I met. When he heard that I was a microbial ecologist, he okay. told me that, my brother, I have, also, I have always wanted to be an ecologist like you, a microbial ecologist, soil microbiologist like you. But okay. when I came here, because scholarship secretariat was not paying my bills, every now and then I was receiving letter from the university threatening to kick me out. If I don't pay, I will be kicked out. And I, at a point, I could not access the lecture halls because you have to swipe to go to the lecture hall. And once you have not paid, your access is denied. So you cannot even enter the lecture halls. Right. And because of this, he told me he graduated with very bad grades that make it impossible for him to progress further. And then he was asking me, have they helped me or they've destroyed me? Because mm. now I have finished my master's. I didn't want to end at the master level. But now I can't progress anymore because I have bad grades due to the challenges that I faced uh, from the, uh, with the scholar, uh, scholarship secretariat. Oh, and wow. Really, let me tell you, you see, what is more serious is that, and this is what should worry many Ghanaians, so, the scholarship secretariat by its conduct is damaging the reputation of Ghana internationally. Mm. That is a source of worry because a time will come that if you hold a genuine letter from the scholarship secretariat, so for example, in our advocacy now, if we're able to clean it up and get a very befitting scholarship secretariat, the time will come that if you hold the scholarship secretariat letter, you will not be recognized by universities abroad. Right. So at that time, even the critical human resources that we need, who should, under the cover of scholarship secretariat, be able to study abroad, will not be able to study abroad because governments will not give them, um, will not give them the visas because they don't trust they will not trust what is coming from the scholarship secretariat. Already, this is beginning to happen because there are many universities in Europe here who don't accept offer letters from the scholarship secretariat. Right. So I ask myself, why do we degrade the state institution to the level that the institution become worthless and cannot serve the purpose of its citizens? Okay. What's the essence of doing this just to achieve a personal parochial interest? And you hear the responses and you ask yourself, these people who are de who are defending this and saying that they are all Ghanaians, everybody is qualified, aside all the corruption that I've mentioned. Sure. If you are saying that the people who you are giving are qualified, I ask you, some of you have traveled abroad. Do you think in Germany here, an ambassador's child can get a scholarship? I, from I was about government? to ask, yeah. Or do you think that in Europe, a minister or like, a deputy but, director, <laughs> as you mentioned, deputy yeah. director of national service, will be qualified to receive thousands and thousands of scholarships. Do you think that um, somebody will be who is well-to-do and has a hospital or a clinic by himself will be giving $50,000 to go and study a luxury yes. course? The course is a luxury course. Mm -hmm. Masters in public administration. So they are also using the scholarship secretariat just to prop up the image of some people. So they just want to have it on their CV. I've yeah. studied in the UK, I've studied in Hungary, I've studied and in I France. Also, I think there's also Germany. a political line there where individuals of the party want to rise. So they want to get the scholarships so they can rise within the party. They have this on their CVs. I mean, that's the pattern I have also seen. Especially, you know, you have yes. a youth activist. Some are going back to the constituencies to be director of this, director of that. So it's a personal, yes, selfish brilliant. goal. Yes, what you are saying is true, but also there's a quid pro quo here okay. between MPP and NDC. Don't forget that there was, um, under NDC, when Domilovo audited the scholarship. scholarship uh, uh, of I, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had ministers of MPP who had also received scholarships. So don't be surprised that you find elements of NDC in there. whose children have been given scholarships in exchange of future favor to come to the NDC win power. <laughs> But, right. I mean, that's why I'm, so, I'm, I'm waiting for the 900 uh, list yes. because it, it has yes. to be a big list. I mean, it has to be, it yes. should pass across because we and, need this to stop really, so that it goes beyond it, a party color that you don't yes. need to have a party it's, color to benefit if you're brilliant and needy. Yes. If you want to see that dishonesty mm. and any Ghanaian who is listening to me, you see, don't defend people that are benefiting from the state at your expense. Oh. There are many countries in the world, they don't have the resources we have, but they've developed because of human resource. So if you have an institution that is undermining our progress towards attaining quality human resource, you must all help us to tear down that institution and build it again. So 
if you are listening to me as a Ghanaian or a younger person, a young person, don't defend the scholarship secretary. If you want to see that they are mm -hmm. dishonest, the fact that they decided to give Fourth Estate 10,000 pages of document tells you they are dishonest people. Yes. They are not truthful. They knew exactly if what they were wanted... looking for, but they, they just wanted yes. to give them work to do. Yes, they just wanted to punish you for deciding to, sure. uh, how dare you hold us accountable. Let's punish them by giving them 10,000 uh, pages. When they could have given a PDF, which could easily be searched. Right. But okay. so that alone should tell every Ghanaian that this is an institution that is trying to elude accountability. So why okay. would anybody take any story or anything from them seriously? So Bridget, okay. the stories about the scholarship secretariat are so damning. There's the issue of corruption, nepotism, favoritism, cronyism. Yeah. All of these have been doubled. Uh, so, uh, so, so I, I need you to hold on a bit because I'll have to take a break. And then when we come back, I think we'll do another 15 minutes and then we wrap up. So we are all taking right. a break. Uh, you can share your thoughts with us on all our social media platforms on Metro TV or one on one pages. And then I will uh, yeah, use the hashtag, um, maybe scholarship bonanza. That's the hashtag they're using. We really need to support the work of Fourth Estates. I mean, we wouldn't be here talking about this, but for Fourth Estates and the investments, I cannot even begin to think about the resources that have gone that had gone into getting this to the public just because they want to shape the public discourse for the public good so that the corruption and the rot within the scholarship secretariat uh it is brought to a halt or ends and then it goes beyond any party you know so that it's not ndc or it's not npp but Ghanaians who are brilliant and needy as the admission statement of the uh, scholarship secretariat states we'll be right back back to one-on-one -on -one. so on your screens now you can see some of the beneficiaries of the scholarships and uh, clearly she is not brilliant and um, she's not needy so i want to talk about this one and this is a daughter of um uh, julie J juliet and uh Asante. she's a filmmaker one of the you know renowned filmmakers i i have personally you know seen her work and she spoke extensively, you know, when John Mahama was in government about, you know, rots in the system, how we shouldn't do this and that. And then she gets the opportunity at the Film Authority, National Film Authority as a CEO. And guess what? She gives her daughter, she, she uses her position to get her daughter 41,000 USD, 41,026 USD to go and study in Manu College. And this is the one that people are talking about. It's pre-medicine. Look, pre-medicine, you don't need to be a medical person to understand. It's not like she's in medical school. This is just to see if she will get the opportunity to be a doctor, to go to the medical school. So pre-medicine, and she's a daughter of um, uh, Juliet Asante. She's called Zina Asante. All right. Yes, uh, and I, I know this is a former IGP's daughter, right? Asante, Asante appeared too. Okay. So uh, former Inspector General of Police, and she got £27,480, University of Aberdeen in the UK in 2019. She studied Bachelor of Law. That can be done at um, Bachelor of Law, Gempa, um, Legon. I can mention so many schools in Ghana that do that. But yeah, it had to be. New Patriotic Party UK branch. And I'm, I hope you've seen this guy speak a few times for the NPP. And LLM, legal practice in the UK, he got £28,380. All right. So back in the studio here, my guest, uh, Suleiman, is safe. And um, I, I, I'm Suleiman. There's a reason why I haven't mentioned your university again. <laughs> He's a research <laughs> fellow. And um, uh, Onheim? On, on, Onheim. Onheim. On, Onheim. <laughs> Onheim. Yes, the research fellow. And um, he has been speaking extensively about it. He has first-hand information about what's happening there. And um, he's speaking because he, he wants things to change because the, it's really about Ghana. Ghana's image locally and abroad. And also it's important that the persons on which that whole secretary was set up are the beneficiaries of this scholarship and not persons who are already wealthy, who are connected, whether politically or whichever way, are the ones who are benefiting. So thank you very much, Silimana, for... Uh, uh, doing this with us. Uh, now, before the break, you know, you, you, you were on a point, but I want to talk, yes. you were talking about, you know, the, the, why we should be worried. And uh, I have heard, you know, former Auditor General, and you mentioned his name earlier, uh, Daniel Domilovo, who is even thinking about joining other persons to sue the state 
to making sure that this thing goes to those who have received the money, either they refund the money, return the money, you know, or that it goes to the right persons. I mean, it, is that not a good um, move? Will that be a good move? And, uh, and will that change anything within the scholarship secretariat? Yes, Bridget, I support it 100%. But before then, let me make this point. Sure, you go see, ahead. The, the state has the power of the purse. Sure. So any government, any government that want to see the growth, the local the stimulation mm. of local growth, sure. you have to channel chunk of your resources to local institutions. So if government has all these resources and decide to fly all mm. these monies outside, right. first of all, look at the implications on our exchange rate. Number two, don't you think these monies could have gone into our universities and make and made them better, make them better than they are now? Absolutely. And anytime I speak about matters like this, I remember what happened at the airport during COVID, and I get very sad as a Ghanaian. Yeah. We had an opportunity when COVID came, no institution in Ghana could do the testing. Noguchi was the one doing the testing. COVID came. We have an opportunity to establish this institution and make it work. And, and we give the money give to them the someone else. Yes, yes, give them the contract to administer the test at the airport. airport. Take the money and go yeah. invest it back into the institution. Rather, we decided to use backdoor channels. Some one when I did to get somebody to come and take all the monies, all those yeah. monies away. Yeah. That's the same thing that is happening here. If you can sponsor somebody to go and do so-called pre-medicine with $41,000. Yeah. And I don't know, Bridget, I'm very sure that you have been receiving requests from many Ghanaians yes. who want to do just first degree. Yes. And some of them are really you brilliant. Need, it's just Recently, to pay their fees. One guy who Sometimes it's just 2,000 like, cities. They're not even big money. Sometimes just 2,000 cities. Big, yes. 3,000 3, cities. 3, I have a story of a young guy who is currently a sonographer and working at Tafu Hospital in Kumasi. Yeah. Because... When he showed me his grades and I realized he had stayed home for three years, I decided to assist him. And now he's serving in a government hospital. But you would spend $41,000 on somebody to go and do so-called pre-medicine. You would spend mm -hmm. $50,000 for somebody to go and do administration. So if our priorities are not set right in a, in a way that government mm -hmm. deliberately channels all its resources, and you mentioned enormous resource of scholarship secretariat. Look, mm -hmm. recently... I took pains to look at the budget allocations. Okay. Look, an institution like Maslock, which is supposed to take people out of poverty, Maslock, the budget for Maslock was 71 million Ghana cities. Guess what? Scholarship Secretariat had a budget of 200 million mm -hmm. Ghana cities. Yes. And there are reports that Scholarship Secretariat overspent its budget by 300%. Well, that is actually a, a, a part thing that the Office of the President is, is known for. So I'm not surprised because scholarship secretary is under so, the Office of the President. So that is why all these institutions and the Office of Presidents must all be removed. Sure. Because, I mean, they get the shield and the cover of the executive and elude accountability, right? So if you are paying all these monies to people to go outside and study courses that are not important, and most of them are not even deserving of the scholarship. Let's be brutal here. Most of them are not deserving of the scholarship. Right. And you can't make excuses. Absolutely. Including saying that somebody has received scholarship twice because he finished one academic year and decided to continue another academic yes. year. Yes. Mm, really? Yeah. This is your justification? For double and scholarships. Claim, yeah, I, I heard that. I, I was We are godly people. We are Christians and Muslims. This is what you say. A state has entrusted you with such a critical duty, giving you enormous resources to help the poor. You decide to misappropriate it. And when you're confronted with the evidence, you come with filibustering and you come with very shabby excuses just to undermine the importance of the discussions the that we are having. Yeah. And you mentioned the way forward. The way forward is that, look, I say that law is important. And mm. I wrote an be. article in the Scholarship Secretariat where I said that there must be a law to regulate uh, selection. Right. And every year, even before the budgets of Scholarship Secretariat, is approved, they must send the list of people that they think are qualified to parliament for approval before budgets are released. And it must be part of their duty to do a periodic surveys of Ghana's job market or labor market and identify loopholes in consultation with stakeholders like Ghana Medical Association, Ghana Science, and all these institutions, in consultation with them, identify critical gaps and purposely roll out scholarships to fill those gaps. So I've 
written a, an extensive article where I talk about what kind of legal framework we need. Mm. But Bridget, as I always say, if you have somebody who has no conscience, no amount of law can cure an unconscionable mind. Wow. No amount of law can cure a greedy mind. Because look, forget one, for example, they have a law, but ask yourself why did Domelobo find all those rots and uh, get fund, even though they had a law? Yeah. Because the law just gave a small room, a small window to give sponsorship to students outside. They use the window to, to uh, as the main door to now funnel out many people to go out there and under very shady circumstances, sponsor them to go out there. Mm. So the law alone is not enough, right? So we need people with conscience. Anybody who is listening to me, please make Ghana your first uh, priority whenever you are given a responsibility. We need people who are truthful to themselves, truthful to their gods. When they are in their closet, they can look boldly in the mirror and say, I have done a good service to my country. We need people like that. And we need a national orientation in that regard before the law can even do anything. Immediately, what I would propose is that there must be a forensic audit. And yeah. I, this is not just the normal routine audit. Mm. A forensic audit to trace every single scholarship, right? Because a forensic audit will follow the trails and give you uh, who was selected, why he was selected, uh, how much the person was given, and post-qualification integration analysis. So those who were sponsored, did they come back to Ghana? If not, even when they are abroad, what kind of works are they doing? After spending, let's say, 30,000 pounds on people, are they abroad as janitors? Are they abroad as caregivers? What kind of work are they doing after being given huge sums of money of our resources? So we need a forensic audit immediately into all the activities of the scholarship secretariat, and the audit must show us the trails. It must follow every single dime that has been invested. And the scholarship secretariat, I'm telling them this day, if you are listening to me, and I said this on joy, I'm challenging you that you have given people who are not even students scholarship. Yeah. I, I was stunned to, to hear that. I, I listened to yes. that interview. I did. At least I, I know one person that you gave money to and the person was is not, not in any university. Yes. And since the person is a complicit, he will never come out to say it. Right. But if you are minded and you bring me before any proper state institution for investigations, I'm willing to and mind you, don't come and play games. And I'm telling the scholarship secretary here, Bridget, they should not come and play games and say, provide evidence. No. When we go before a proper state institution, I will ask the state institution to subpoena the records of all recipients in a particular country. I'll mention the country to the state institution. When they subpoena the list and the bank transfers, I will point out who the person is, who is not a student but receives scholarships from you. Mm. The person himself told me when I met him in one of the countries abroad here, I know someone who also received monies. You went behind the scenes and took the monies back and the person's bank account was closed down. This mm. is something that you know, scholarship, scholarship secretariat, right? Mm. So immediately, a forensic audit will show all these things. Maybe it will end at the point where the monies have been transferred. But if they are minded and they want to go into this matter, I'm willing to uh, assist and I don't want any games with the scholarship secretary coming to say uh, we, we want evidence, bring uh, material evidence. And all. you know I cannot get that evidence in terms of mm. the uh, real proof of you transferring the money or receiving the money. It's only an ass that can do that. I cannot do that, right? So please be truthful to yourselves. You know what I'm saying is the truth. The monies that you are channeling out of this country and going behind the scenes to take those monies back. Please, okay. the poor people of Ghana need the money there are brilliant people who need to be taken care of. And our resources are already meager. We don't have enough to spare. So do you, please... Suleiman, I want to come here. Do you, do you subscribe to the idea that, especially what Domelevo says, that it should be localized, local, not foreign? Yes. So all the courses that are doable in Ghana okay. must, must be, be local scholarships. Absolutely. And, they so... must and I agree with Professor Kwekuaza, who said they must decentralize the scholarships in a way that the universities themselves are selecting the best students and enrolling them into automatically. Best needy so, students. Bridges, Bridges, let me tell you something. Sure. I told you that when I came here, after my master's, before I even completed, I had been selected sure. in, on a very prestigious European research project. Ahead of many, let me say, Chrome half mm, right? I get you. Why, are they, why did they do that? Why is it that in Ghana... People complete with first class, and after they are given the award that they will complete the first class, they don't know where to go again. If okay. the government is 
if the scholarship is okay and, and unfortunately uh Suleiman uh, uh Isif's uh network just froze uh, we'll see if we, we'll try and connect with him because I wanted his final words because we're really at the end of the conversation uh, that he supports the idea that look the suit by Domelovo he also wants the thing he's ascribed to uh, Professor Azar's view that look it should be decentralized so the universities are part of the selection of the brilliant students so they might understand your your back on the line so if you could uh, wrap up for us uh, on yeah. your points on the way forward and what else needs to be done to make it uh, uh, clean. So I think it must be it must be multifaceted. Right. So we must have a group of people who are online collecting. I said this on Joy FM. Let's collect evidence of all the narrations that people are going to make. Present them before a competent body in Ghana. Let's say Shraj, because this also borders on administrative injustice, right? So let's say Shraj or Parliament, right? Just as parliamentarians have been interested to bring private members' bill on mm. LGBTQ, mm. I'm expecting okay. the members okay. of the members who are minded to also initiate a process of uh, how do I call it, a private mm. members' bill to mm. regulate the scholarship secretary. But as I mentioned, underneath the law, if you have people without conscience, they will still manipulate the law, they will go by the law and do whatever they want to do. So let's support Domelobo. And I say we must use a multifaceted approach and our approach must be nimbling in nature. So we bring a case to Bosch Raj, yeah. And I'm willing to take up this Shraj matter, and I'm calling on the Ghanaian who want to join. assist me. Thank and then you. Those who want to go to court to declare the actions of scholars mm -hmm. as unconstitutional and abuse of process can also do that. All right. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to you. And it, in my attempt to mention the university for the very last time. <laughs> the University of Hohenheim. <laughs> Hohenheim. 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 So um, a big thank you to you, uh, Isif uh, Suleiman, uh, uh, research yeah. fellow, uh, Hans Uni Rottenberg University, University of Ornheim, Germany, for this passionate uh, uh, conversation on the Roth as scholarship secretariat. And he's more than happy to avail himself to any credible institution. He mentions uh, Shraj and any other person, you know, like Domelovo says, look, if it's a suit, if there's a forensic audit, he's more than happy to also provide evidence before those committee. What, we, what is not in doubt is that sec um, scholarship secretary has actually... Secretariat has not denied these things. They are just saying, oh, uh, Fourth Estate does not understand it. What do you mean by They are just looking for words, semantics, looking for things, around, dancing around it. An admission of the problem probably would help. But we are also making headway with Fourth Estate. Fourth Estate is making headway because at least they admit that there is a problem by their own excuses and reasons for giving monies to persons who did uh, two courses, you know, when one is struggling to get a single one. My name is Bridget Oates. You leave your comments. Uh, yeah, and we'll share them with the rest of uh, with our viewers across the country. Have a good evening. Thank you very much for watching. You've worked hard for what you have, your money, your assets, your 401k and home. Isn't it all worth protecting? Nearly one in four consumers have been a victim of identity theft. LifeLock Ultimate Plus helps protect your finances with up to $3 million in reimbursement. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats you might miss. And if your identity is stolen, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. Let LifeLock help protect what you've worked so hard for. Save 25% off your first year on LifeLock Ultimate Plus at LifeLock.com aware. Terms apply.